Today, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is Digital 2 ET122. Today, we're going to learn how to identify when a counter is in a certain state by using counter decoding. Uh, for example, your terminal count can be considered a decoded signal indicating the counter has reached its completion, either up or down, and is going to recycle on the next clock pulse. Uh, for example, a 74190 here, that's our decade counter. It's got its max min right here, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. This guy goes high when 1001 0, 0, 1 is on there. Basically, you've decoded the, the, the maximum state. Uh, but suppose we want to know when it reaches some other count between 0 and 9. Uh, let's say at position 4, we want to send a signal to some other device. And after we've done that, we're going to keep on counting up to 9. So what you can do is just take your Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0 signals and put them into a gate. They'll indicate when they've respectively reached 0, 1, 0, 0. That's again MSB. To LSP, which is binary for four. Okay, so you want to if you want an active high indication, I would recommend just using an AND gate there, where these are respectively Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0, and you'd have to invert Q2. And excuse me, Q3, Q1, and Q0. Okay, to get an active high one right there. So when you put 0, 1, 0, 0 on that gate, that's what's going to indicate a one right there. You want an active low indication, invert that guy right there. It's going to give you a zero. Or just use a NAND gate since they're pretty common. Okay, um, I would not recommend using partial encoding on this, um, like we did our low, uh, the lower modulus counting and asynchronous counters, because, uh, for example, if we did our four, you know, partial encoding, where we got a single input and here, I know that sounds kind of dumb, but Q2, it's going to indicate, yeah, it's definitely going to indicate when four, it's going to have a high there. But it will also indicate a high at state 5, also at 6, also at 7, because that Q2 bit is high. So basically, that's why you're going to invert properly to get the proper indication. You want to invert Q3, Q1, and Q0, basically to ensure the we get the one and only occurrence of four. Okay, so uh, counter decoding is not limited to just synchronous counters. If this is applied to asynchronous counters, prepare yourself to experience transitional glitches in the decoded outputs, given that the lower order bits change before higher order bits in asynchronous counters. So uh, let's go ahead and draw a diagram of an asynchronous counter um, with a little bit of delay between each one of the transitional bits, the lower bits there, and we'll, I'll show you exactly what that means. So here's our three-bit asynchronous counter. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to decode every single state. And remember, it's three bits, so it's going to count from 0 to 7. So let's go ahead. This is our clock. And I'm just doing alternating colors here is Q0, our LSB, Q1, our middle bit, Q2, our MSB. And remember, our MSBs change later than the LSBs. So what is each one of these states here? Um, we're going to respectively put, let's say that's 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth. Three, four, five, 
0.67. And let's say we're looking for active low encoding. So pretty obvious, in this region right here, we're reading 0, 0, 0. So our active low decoding for 0 is definitely going to be low right there. OK, now are there any other times in this 3-bit three three asynchronous counting scheme that there's going to be a 0? Well, ideally at the end when it recycles. It's going to go from 0 to 1 to 2, up to 7, and then going to recycle back to 0. But because it's an asynchronous counter, we've got these natural glitch states to it. For example, right here, 0, 0, 0. There's a brief window in time where you're seeing another 0. And you're going to get that active low right there. Are there any other times that there's a 0? Yep, right here, 0, 0, 0. And then it's going to be a brief dip down there. And then the only other time that you're going to get a 0 is when it's supposed to be a 0 once it's recycled. OK, so what are the glitch states here? Right there and right there. You don't mean for it to have a 0, but because it's an asynchronous counter, this decoder is in, in error reading a zero at those two spots. Okay, for a one, well, it's not a one until it's zero, zero, one. So that time right there, it's going to read a one. Are there any other times it reads a one? No. So two, so look for two here. Well, zero, one, zero. That's the appropriate time it should be reading a 2 in our counting scheme. But there's another glitch state which exists here. So look for right here, 0, 1, 0. It's an inadvertently reading another 2 right there. So that's another glitch right here. Whoops. So basically, what the decoding by means of individually identifying when the counter has reached an individual state, you're catching those spots with a um, inside an asynchronous counter. So the other glitch states that are exist for our three bit counter here is again, we are making a transition. Where is it right here? We've got a we're going from one zero one. We want to go to 6, but we are inadvertently reading. Here is a, one moment. So 1, 0, 0. So we're inadvertently reading a 4 before we get our 1, 1, 0, or 6. Okay? So our 4 is going to have a glitch right here. And when is it really a 4? It should be right here. Three, there was no glitch in that one, because the only time it reads three is this window right here. So it's high all of the times, indicates that it's a three at that point. Okay, is there any other time that it reads a four? Yes, right here. Oh, excuse me. It does not read a four at that moment, it reads a four at this moment. One zero zero. So that other glitch state, which I just showed, is it's going from seven one 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 to one one zero, which is six. So you're inadvertently having a glitch state right there, whereas the correct six actually occurs right here. Five, no problem with it. Seven, no problem with it. Um, basically, counter decoding is allowing you to catch these glitch states. But again, maybe you don't want to catch them. Maybe you really want to have read a six only here and right here. Well, one way to eliminate these decoding glitches is to strobe the input, i.e. reading the input only when it's in a stable state. So for our unstable states, when are they occurring? Well, they appear to be occurring 
That's a mess. <laughs> Okay, so clean it up a little bit, and I'm just going to highlight their glitches right here. Right there, that's our inadvertent zero. Here's our inadvertent two. Inadvertent zero again. Four. Our other four, excuse me, our other six, and our other four. So these regions here, they're kind of occurring in close proximity to these positive edges here. You know, this particular case, it's a positive edge triggered asynchronous counter where the Q0, excuse me, the not Q0 is fed into the next stage is clock. So they're occurring in these regions of the positive edge transition. That's an unstable area. Why not read? Why not strobe in a very stable region? Just take the reading then at the active low position. So when the clock is in an active low, we've definitely got a zero, zero, zero. When a clock is in an active low on the next pulse, we've definitely got a zero, zero, one. Next one, we've definitely got zero, one, zero. You see what, what's going on here is we're purposely avoiding these unstable transition regions by doing an active low strobe right here. So what you can do is something like this, whereby your clock, which is feeding your counter, which is a mod 8 in this particular case, is also being fed to this enable right here. And notice the active low bubble there. So it's only taking, it's only enabled when this clock is in a low position and everything is in a stable region. Okay, so again, what do these, uh, what do these bubbles in the output mean? Well, that means when the counter is in a state of zero, the zero output will have a zero on it. Okay, so this is a brief summary of counter decoding, not limited to synchronous counters. Um, when you're using it with asynchronous counters, definitely expect to experience some glitches. How do you get around the glitches? Using strobing to take the input only when it's in its stable state. Okay.